Hi, it's Kathy Chenna with Tri-Cities Community TV and we'd like to thank the Coquitlam Library for donating this space to us as well as the uh, Coquitlam First Nations peoples for having us on their land. Uh, today with me is Carol Mitz Murray, the past Executive Director of the Tri-Cities Transition Society and we're here to find out what new things she's doing now and how she's helping our community in doing so. Welcome and thank you so much for being here Carol. Uh, wow you were with the executive as the executive director for Tri-Cities Transitions for a number of years. You're no stranger to us here at Tri-Cities TV. Um, tell us a little bit about why you transitioned yourself into the Canadian Centre for Men and Families now, uh, a new nonprofit or a nonprofit that uh, that you're leading. Um, I can't wait to hear uh, much more about it. Well, thank you, Kathy, for having me. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited to be here to talk about the Canadian Centre for Men and Families. I am working with the organization, and that organization is focused on boys and men and families and community and it is about services for men and families who are fleeing domestic violence mm -hmm. and I became interested in it when I was with Tri-City Transitions because men also need services and men came for services and quite frankly there are few services for men uh, who are victims of domestic violence mm -hmm. and there's also few services for men who choose to use violence in their life. So this was an opportunity for me to step forward and continue uh, really advocating for services for men and thank goodness that the services are in place for women but we need more to strengthen both women and men for the for the betterment of children. So the Canadian Centre for Men and Families actually originated in uh, Ontario, in Toronto, in 2014. So it has been building services for men and families and it offers programs in Ontario virtually for men there and it also does in Alberta and also in BC. Mm -hmm. And my main focus in stepping forward to help them was also to open up a transitional housing unit in BC or Metro Vancouver for men and boys and families fleeing domestic violence. Mm -hmm. We continue to work on that, but I will say to you that we have um, acquired a property in Calgary and that is opening on November 1st and in 2021 the Canadian Centre for Men and Families opened its first home in Toronto. Mm -hmm. Now that home is constantly full and they have a waiting list mm -hmm. and it serves it has nine bedrooms so it is serving nine men and families and those families can be extended families as well mm -hmm. because domestic violence is not selective about how it impacts families. Right. So that is me uh, where I'm at in, in a nutshell and I just I see the need for it. Mm -hmm. You know it's one in three women are impacted by domestic violence and one in four men. Now when you were um, at uh, Tri-Cities Transition the sort of mission and vision there was to break the cycle of abuse and this was something right in our own backyard right here um, in the Tri-Cities and affecting you know you were helping the people um, in your own backyard in the Tri-Cities these women that you know like you said one in three women are affected um, with uh, respect to the the men now um, what are you sort of seeing what are some of the statistics do you have the statistics in terms of what's going on here um, in Coquitlam let's say Port Moody or Port, Port Coquitlam? I don't have specific um, statistics for what's happening right here in, in the Tri-Cities. It would be more of a provincial area uh, or provincial statistic. But in, you know, last year we served over a thousand men have reached out for services. Now, one of the things we need to remember is men don't ask for help. 
Right. It, I mean, women struggle to ask for help. A lot of times men aren't even realizing that they are in a situation that's domestic violence. Mm -hmm. And then if they do find themselves there, they don't know who to turn to. And if they do reach out for help, they're often told, well, you're a man, deal with it. Men do need support. And I witnessed that when I was at Tri-City Transitions. I, when I was there, I co-facilitated a program for men. Now that was over four years. And those men came, some of them were mandated through the courts, some came because they were impacted by domestic violence, and some came because they wanted to learn how to have better relationships. But Kathy, it was so humbling to be there as the only woman in the room mm -hmm. with, say, eight participants and a, and a male facilitator, mm -hmm. and watch men begin to open up when they felt safe and secure, mm -hmm. that they could actually know that somebody was hearing them, somebody was listening to them. And what I discovered is men, like women, really are open to finding out what's going on, what's causing that, how can I be a better, uh, say, a better parent, how can I be a better partner? So they really do want to know, and they really do need to want to be listened to as well. Mm -hmm. It can be embarrassing for them to ask for help. I'm sure you find that, um, you know, it, it's more difficult than, it's a struggle for women as it is, but a, a woman is more likely maybe to ask for help versus a man. A man is going to try to sort it out themselves, like you said, and versus, you know, someone telling them like, well, you're the man, figure it out, right? It, it can be quite embarrassing and very vulnerable for them, I would think, um, coming into, you know, even this co-facilitation that you did. Um, what are your plans for the, the future in terms of, you know, do you think that you guys will look at something um, here in the Tri-Cities or are you going to sort of stick to Calgary and, and move over to Vancouver a little bit later? Uh, tell me a little bit about your future plans. We are working on uh, an initiative in the Tri-Cities. It's not something that I can speak about right now, but we are working on that. And I mean, a facility, you know, if we were able to open up a facility in the Tri-Cities, mm -hmm. that quite frankly would to begin with, it would serve all of Metro Vancouver. Okay. And it could very well serve all of all of BC. But it's something new. It is something that people have to begin to open their minds to and open their hearts to. Uh, yes, because men too experience abuse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, what about, um, you said you can't really talk too much about it. If this were to happen, let's pretend it's a pipe dream and it actually is happening, what are you hoping uh, that that brings to the community as well as what kind of services will you have? We know that getting real estate and leasing space is very, very scarce. Something that's affordable to lease is very scarce in our community, but what are you hoping to sort of derive from this if, if it does um, open up and you do something replicated to what has been done in Ontario? So first and foremost, let me um, explain that men throughout BC are already accessing services. And those services are all virtual. And so the types of services is there is a men's peer support group. There is a men's parenting group. There is a uh, group in regards to parent parental alienation. There is counseling, for individual counseling for men. And there are um, law programs for men as well who are dealing with separation. So men have access to that. So in looking at a potential program, say for Metro Vancouver or the Tri-Cities, that is looking at what I would refer to as a housing model, housing first model, right. where you can hopefully put in place interim transitional housing together with a model that has affordable housing, which can also be called second stage. Right. So it really is about 
getting somebody into safety first and then providing those outreach services of counseling, of peer support, of outreach, uh, you know, when someone needs help in finding perhaps some resources, medical resources, um, or help with childcare, whatever that might be. So that really is the vision. That is what we have opened up in Calgary, is a housing first approach. And it's, it's interim transitional housing with second stage housing as part and parcel of it. In Ontario, what they have is a, um, a house, so it's more referred to as that transition house or that interim shelter, emergency shelter for men and families. So the model in Ontario is just a little bit different than the model in Calgary. So as you mentioned, Ontario and Calgary, those facilities are slightly different from one another and maybe the Tri-Cities one would be even, you know, a little bit different than those. And I think that with your experience with the second stage housing at the um, Tri-Cities transition and all of that, I think I think I just wonder why in terms of, you know, the, the shift uh, with regards to, you know, helping, you know, women and, and their children, you know, like you said, you found a need. Was there something that impacted you that you saw like, oh, wow, like more and more men are coming out of the woodwork in, in domestic violence. And then you decided that you would make that shift. Like, what was that that moment for you that, you know, because you'd been at Tracy's Transition for a while. I remember coming to different events and I remember Joy's place and things like that. And maybe we're going to have Joe's place next. Who knows? But but I'm just wondering about that. Yeah, why why did you change? I think my change came over time. Mm -hmm. and certainly it was um, seeing and talking to the men who mm -hmm. came inquiring about services at Tri-City Transitions uh, and there wasn't anything. Right. You know, and, and I... Um, say thank you to the board of directors at Tri-City Transitions who had, at that time uh, was open, uh, were open to, to bringing men on, you know, to be able to provide parenting and provide support. Mm -hmm. And really over time, Kathy, it, when I, I guess, the more one immerses themselves into, into the field of domestic violence and relationships that are, are not healthy, I've also had to stand back and have a look. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I have a history. I understand domestic violence yes. intimately. Yes. But I also wonder what, you know, and I will never know, what might it have been like if there had been services yes. for my ex? Mm -hmm. What would it have been like? And when I look at services now where, you know, where a woman and man choose to not stay together. Mm -hmm. I also see how that impacts children. Mm -hmm. And I also see that in a lot of ways, there just aren't the services there to provide the support mm -hmm. to the woman and to the man. Mm -hmm. And so in essence, yes, I do have a deep passion about what is it that we need to do to bring forward healthier relationships? Yes, yes, for our families and, and our children. For our families, for our children, and ultimately for the community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, Kathy, when I talk to people in the community about the Canadian Centre for Men and Families, what I hear is, yes, Carol, and it's coming from both women and men uh, who say, it's about time. Mm -hmm. And really and truly, it is about time, Kathy. We're in the 21st century. Yes, We're in yes. 2024. And how much has changed when it comes to domestic violence? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. what are we doing to help boys and men understand what it takes for a healthy relationship? Mm -hmm. What are we doing for girls and women? Exactly. We have to answer that question. I'm not sure I can answer it right now, but really and truly, healthy relationships makes a healthy community. Yes, yes, it does. And, it does. and I just see so many people suffering as a result mm -hmm. of domestic violence. Mm -hmm.
Can you just tell us briefly what some of the signs, you know, our viewers are going to be watching this and what are some of the signs for women and for men? If you could list a few that, you know, we would, some is obvious, you know, we have obvious signs, but domestic violence, you know, the definition of it and everything, what are some of the signs that we could be looking for? You know, sometimes something happens at home and the woman thinks it's her fault or the man thinks it's his fault. And then they just kind of sweep it under the carpet. And then it happens a few months later again, and they sweep it under the mm -hmm. carpet because things got better. It's that vicious cycle. Can, can you help us understand a little bit of the signs that we should look for at home and well, I'll start out with mental and emotional abuse. Mm -hmm. And so in essence, it's in a relationship, regardless of partner, if you're constantly belittling your partner, that really impacts their emotions and their emotional well-being. Now, this is my statement, it's not anyone else's, but emotional and psychological abuse happens over time and it's like it begins to destroy who you are mm -hmm. at the core of who you are. Mm -hmm. So it breaks you down and you don't even realize it's happening, whether you're a woman or whether you're a man. Right. So when, when a partnership is and it's not healthy and someone is demeaning, they're calling you names or they may constantly be um, telling you you can't cook, or you can't clean, or you're a bad parent, or, you know, the clothes you're wearing, it's, what are you doing? Or, you know, why is it that you're always looking like that, or walking like that, mm -hmm. or, you know, they may say, well, you're dumb, and they just keep repeating that. Eventually, that wears you down, and you don't even realize that. And that, in a way, is how somebody can control you. Right. You know, it's whatever their need is to control another person. Mm -hmm. Or they will gaslight you. Right. You know, and as I would say, domestic or emotional and mental and psychological abuse is horrible. They may also, um, in the world of, say, um, spirituality they will demean you and what you believe in right. and your religion mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they may stalk you on your cell phone they may be constantly checking in with you where are you going who are you seeing how come you're seeing them and where are you now and just never ever leaving you alone right and you have to stop and ask yourself why yeah you know, that's not normal, is it? That is not normal. No, no. And they might do it via email as well. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and in some cases it gets so horrific where they will install cameras in the house to watch you. And so that's completely invading your space. Mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. You know, and it's just those are just some of the things. Right. I mean, it can be finances as well, where they control absolutely everything. Say, maybe you're, you're working whatever capacity outside of the home, mm -hmm. and they will demand that they have your money, that you turn it over to them, and right. you have nothing. Right, right. So it all really gets to the core of that mental and emotional abuse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm understanding it better now. Um, how, how, uh, what kind of help are you looking for? How can others sort of reach out and help you in, in, in the ways that you may need? I know you're in the early stages of this now, and so share a little bit with that uh, to us. Well, if anyone comes across a man and families that are dealing with domestic violence, mm -hmm. have them reach out to menandfamilies.org okay. because that's where they can access services that's where intake is, and then they will get connected with services here in BC. So that, first and foremost, is very, very important. You know, the other thing is that people can begin to talk about it, Kathy. Let's put domestic violence on the center of the table, mm -hmm. and let's talk about it. Let's do away with the blame and the shame and the guilt but let's really 
have those discussions. If we think someone is not in a healthy relationship, let's ask them. It might be uncomfortable, right. but let's ask them. Mm -hmm. Let people know that there is support. Let people know that they don't have to walk the path themselves. Right. Alone. Alone. Mm -hmm. alone. And here in BC, in British Columbia, well, let's talk about it more because really we're at a time right now, we're in the midst of an election, and bring that to the forefront, mm -hmm. that men and families also need services. Yes, exactly, exactly. Yes. Well, you've just heard from Carol Metz-Murray. She is with the Canadian Centre for Men and Families. Uh, if you know of a family where there's a need, and especially uh, where the man needs some extra help, uh, please have them reach out to menandfamilies.org, and uh, that's where they will get started in a healthier and better uh, family relationship. Uh, we heard from Carol Metz-Murray today. I'm Kathy Chenna. Thanks so much for watching Tri-Cities Community TV.